Absolutely. Yes. Pass it over to you. Give us all the greatness. Hi everyone, uh, like Belinda said, my name is Ulises Martinez. I am a uh, bartender here in Chicago and in the Southwest suburbs. Um, so yeah, when I got asked to participate and um, think, bring things out from the pantry and things that you have laying around in your fridge and you know, it's very easy to, to really make a cocktail as long as you have a little bit of sweetness and acidity to it. Um, so for what I'm using in today's cocktails uh, for the using berry preserves, uh, pancake syrup, which is one of my favorite sweeteners, especially um, just to like brunchiness, uh, and then a little bit of, uh, of lemon. And for the second cocktail, we're doing gin, sweet vermouth, strawberry preserves, um, and again, a little bit of acidity, some lemon, um, just to brighten it up. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start making this mezcal cocktail as I tell you a little bit more about my experience with Marcus Samuelson. Please, I'm so fascinated about that. I need to watch the episode. It's a great yeah. episode. It was a Chicago episode, so they had Yuli on there. They had, um, who else did they have? They had, a uh, They had, a uh, Carnita Surupan. Carnita Surupan, that's who it was. Yeah, and, uh, Chef Carlos Gaitan from Suco. Yeah, so it was a really great crowd. So what, Yuli, right here, we're doing an ounce and a half of mezcal. Right, so we're going to be doing an ounce and a half of mezcal. And I'm assuming if, if we have tequila, is that a good substitute? If you are it's doing definitely this, a good substitute. And you got this period, really. Matt and Yuli, we should also tell everybody that you put the ingredients for our updated cocktails in the chats. So if somebody needs to get ingredients and follow along that way, it's up here. This is Yuli's cocktail number one, right? The 1.5 ounces of mezcal and 0.5 of lemon. Correct. Number one. Yeah. And then this is this one's building in. The, is this one building it where? In the shaker. In the shaker. So this is gonna be a shaken cocktail. Yeah, topped off with a spark. Any sparkling that you have. Um, honestly, during quarantine, I've been drinking a lot of uh, white claws, so <laughs> I've been using that as a topper for a lot of my cocktails. Um. Yeah, so we're gonna do some uh, some blueberry preserves here. So this can be, you said earlier, this can be any kind of preserve you happen to have, right? Can right, um, it works with apricot, it works like anything savory really, so anything berry. I have a super weird one, I have strawberry and rams. Like, strawberry and rams? Ooh, yeah. That sounds awesome. I think I'm, should I try it? Yes, yeah, please, definitely. and let me know how that is. So, so far we've done 1.5 ounces of mezcal. You put in half of lemon. Half of right. preserves is next. Half preserves. A little bit of pancake syrup. And you don't want to do too much of the pancake syrup just because the preserves are also a little sweet. Oh, it smells so weird. Strawberry and ramps, you guys. I finally have a reason to use it. I love ramps and strawberries, so I, I think that it'd be good. Have you, do you use pancake syrup in cocktails often? Yuli, have you done that before or is that just for today? Um, no, I, I'm doing this for, uh, I love pancake syrup, and actually, as we were having a conversation, an idea popped into my head. A friend of mine has um, infused mezcal with bacon fat, so I kind of want to infuse a mezcal with bacon fat and then do like a pancake sort of cocktail with bacon. Hey, Yuli, I think Libby has a question. Let's, let's spotlight her and have her ask that. Hi. Hey. Can we use the maple syrup instead of the pancake syrup? I actually didn't know there is a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally works. Yeah, any kind of, like anything that has some sweetness to it, right? And is a little Right. Dark. Even if you just have um, simple syrup, that works. I'm ready to shake. Favorite part of the job. I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> it smells so good. Yes. A beautiful oh, purple it's color. Amazing. And a great color. Yeah. 
Working for Yuli, I know one of the biggest things was we were always trying to get cool colors. Purple, uh, red, like any kind red. of like orange, yellow. Like that's one of Yuli's like trademarks is like a dope looking drink. Mine's a little weird because Strawberry Ramp Jam does not have a cute color. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, yeah, it looks like a little apple-y, too. Yeah. <laughs> and then we top that with a little sparkling. Sparkling, right. I love it. What a clever idea. You can top it off, garnish it with a couple of fresh uh, blueberries on top. Maybe a little bit of uh, lemon, if you want to do a wheel or a moon. Can I garnish with the radish? Because that's what I have for the ceviche. <laughs> Ooh. Hell yeah. Melinda, I'm dying to know what that tastes like because I'm imagining like onions, garlic, and strawberries. It's delicious. I it's made mine with the tequila and it's so good. I'm not too big on sweetness, so I wish I had the mezcal. So whoever doesn't like sweetness that much, tequila might be a little too sweet, but it's delicious still. And it's a perfect brunch cocktail. You can taste the jam and everything. Well, I'm super into using the savory flavors, right? Like cilantro cocktails and then the ramp. I mean, oh, yeah. mine is super rampy. It's very rampy. So if you don't like ramps and onions, this is not a good combo. <laughs> it's delicious. Mark, I think you'd like it. That's so good. Okay, so that's cocktail number one. And we no, have- Number two, you're just building for the glass, right? Yeah, so this is gonna be a little bit easier. I wanna get a big cubed ice, um, which I already have here. Um, and we're, for that, we're going to be using gin. Um, I have some beef eater here at home. Great gin. Um, I love gin. Love gin. For that, we're going to be doing two ounces. You're going to do half an ounce of your vermouth using Antica. I forgot vermouth. Yeah, so if, if, you, if you were on for the Mathiasin episode, you might have some Mathiasin sweet vermouth left over. Dolan works really well, too. We've yep. been doing this Mathiasin vermouth a workout, Matt. Like, it's been good. I, yeah, I love that. Yuli, have you had Mathiasin sweet vermouth? I have not. Dude, try it. If you find it, it's delicious. We'll get you some. It's so good. Our Mathiasin vermouth lasted us 24 hours, and that was it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I love doing vermouth and soda. It's like my go-to. Perfect. I love it. I wasn't going to say anything, but that's definitely the case for us too. So. <laughs> we have a question from um, Tina Johnson. She's not on video, so I'm going to ask it for her. She asked if the Mezcal cocktail has a name, and Matt decided the name is cocktail number one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yuli always has great names too. That's a lie. It's I. I am so terrible with names. Um, <laughs> chef Chef Diana Davila used to name most of the cocktails. Yeah, that I would just true. go up to her and be like, "There you go." So also, Yuli, for those who don't know, Yuli was also you were the beverage director at Mi Tokayo, right? So we were building this nice Tokayo sort of alumni and uh, lovers family here at our brunch, which is really fun. I see Cajo scrambling around um, getting together an epic garnish for your cocktail. So I can't wait to see that. Oh, no, just, just a simple twist yeah. from the final night. Yes, that's and amazing. It's much prettier than one I've ever made. So that <laughs> <laughs> looks delicious. I tried it's about three times to make the heart last week, and it was an uh, epic. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> heart. Mark and Dustin have heart. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, Yuli, do we, do we rock out? Let's finish up cocktail number two. Yeah, so, I mean, I think I, I went ahead from everybody. But <laughs> you, so you walk us through it. So you had the gin, you had the quarter of the lemon. Quarter of the lemon, half of the vermouth. Okay. And then half of uh, strawberry. strawberry preserves. And then with the basil, are you muddling it or you just put it in there as like a garnish? No, I just, uh, I gave it a little bit of a slap and then put it in there just to release those oils and that uh, aroma scent. I love strawberry and, um, and basil together. It's one of my favorite things to pair up. So this, this really does wonders. And it's also, awesome color too. I think from the chat that uh, cocktail number one is now going to be named the Tina because it looks like everyone wants it to be named the Tina. So we'll do that. And then 
Question from Mark Chi, our homeboy. Mark, go ahead, ask your question. Let me spotlight you really quick, brother. Oh, hey. so I was just wondering, um, oops, uh, why is this cocktail number two shaken, I uh, mean, stirred over shaken? Um, you could do it um, stirred or shaken. Um, I personally, for the vermouth, I don't like to shake vermouth. I like to stir it. It why opens up a little bit brighter. It, oh. The way it opens up for the cocktail and it creates, um, okay. can't get words out. Extra. Yeah, we're all <laughs> yeah, so when you shake it, just the vermouth as, as it mixes, it just kind of opens up uh, more beautifully than if you were to shake it and be a little bit more aggressive with it. I love that you said that because vermouth is so complicated, right? There yeah. really, there's so many intense and complex aromas and flavors and the finish is interesting. So I never really thought about that, that you do it more justice when you stir it in a cocktail instead of shaking. Very cool. Right. Like, like I love it. Vermouth and a martini. Martinis are, should be stirred then rather than shaken. Yeah. I see Jessica stirring her, her coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that was a whole misconception from just the James Bond movies. Yeah, um, I read that actually. Yeah, that that became a thing after the movie, but it, it's originally stirred. It's never shaken. I love it. That's so fun. Well, Uli, I already learned so much, and I can't wait to watch. Where can we find that episode, the Marcus Samuelson show episode, where you talk about? Uh, I believe it's on PBS. They've been re-airing it during quarantine. I think I've seen it twice. You can see it online, though. Yeah, you can watch it online. It's but it's definitely Chicago online. Too. So it's all about Chicago, and our boy Uli here is uh, featured in it. Really cool. And check out his Instagram, too. He's doing a lot of cool stuff on there as well. Well, cheers. Thank you for sharing your magic and your a little bit about your spirit and these great recipes. I'm so excited. But now that Thank I'm you for having me. Matt, you're welcome and you're always welcome anytime. I love these savory cocktails. They're amazing. Let's, drink. Let's get a cheers to the king. Yeah, salute. Need a little salute. Toast, y'all. <laughs> We're also sort of hoping to get a little um, flaming moment as well later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like lighting our apartments on fire. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Matt, we need some food. Absolutely. What are we doing next? So, next guest. Thank you, Yuli, once again. Next guest, we have uh, a sous chef from the Boca Restaurant Group, Darren Underway, who's here going to make us a, or to cook with us, a pink shrimp ceviche. He's also going to talk about his cookbook a little bit. Uh, so, let's spotlight Darren. Darren, where you at, bro? There you are. Oh, that's the cookbook. This is the graphic I was telling you about, Darren. Yeah, that looks awesome. I mean, you and guys maybe Mark. should hire, hire Mark for the next one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so the cookbook is uh, basically a collaboration um, between uh, Dustin Bilo. He He's basically the editor. He he did everything with the making the photos look great and the recipes match up all. And um, basically the cookbook that we wanted to make because um, we were um, just bored, you know, being in restaurants were very used they're just going and going and going and uh, to have this all slow down is very strange. So uh, it's a cookbook with recipes that uh, range from really easy uh, snacks to, you know, roasting and um, technique oriented styles of cooking meat. So um, basically. So, so Darren, today what we're making, is this something that would be similar to what you would find in the cookbook? Yeah. So it's, it's a, uh, it's pretty simple. It's straightforward. It's a, it's a, it's a, easier version of a classic ceviche, meaning um, the shrimp is, that we have is already cooked, so we're not relying on the acid to cook uh, the shrimp, which usually takes around like four hours or so. So uh, it's a little bit of a, like a quick hack uh, to get it done faster and start eating, so. Sounds good, let's get into it. All right, so um, right now we have basically our spread, uh, we have the mise en place basically, which is everything what you need for assembling a dish. So we have the shrimp right here. Um, these are like a baby pink shrimp. They're super nice, super sweet. Um, you can get them at H Mart, H -Mart which is um, uh, an Asian grocery store. Uh, it's on Jackson, it's in Chicago. Um, and then we have uh, El Milagro tortilla chips, which are my personal favorite, and saltines for the uh, actual crackers or to eat it with the vehicle. So basically we'll get into it. Um, what I like to do is I'll start by putting the shrimp right in this bowl right here. Darren, do you have any thoughts about like, should you buy cooked shrimp from the grocery store? Is like frozen okay? What do yeah. you? So 
I, this is just what I like um, for this meal. And you can even do, you know, regular size shrimp and cut them down into smaller pieces. Um, you can just, you know, boil them quickly with some salt and chill them down. However you want to do it. I mean, you can you can basically do whatever you want with them. Also, is that a can of Miller High Life next to you? It is. I was trying to fit in with the theme. Uh, <laughs> we heartily approve. <laughs> I love Miller High Life, dude. It's always welcome. Oh, it's the best. So basically from here, what I'm going to do is going to take about a half of a red onion. Um, I don't know if you can see it. And then basically, uh, I'm just going to cut it very thin, like thin slices down. Um, you can cut this however you want. Um, some people want to dice it. If you like red onion, uh, you can do less, you can do more. I like the big pieces. It's basically nice for uh, texture. Uh, it's a nice bite as well. So I'm going to add about that much. Do you have a knife brand that you really love, Darren? I know chefs and their knives. It's like a big thing. I'm always curious to hear about that. Um, I, I like Japanese knives. I also like German knives. Um, to be honest, I'm not really um, that, uh, I don't know, nickety about it. I think uh, if it's sharp and it feels good in your hand, that's the most important thing. Yay. So, um, and then next I'm going to do is I'm going to take these radishes. Um, about three radishes. These are cleaned, um, washed just with some cold water, take off each side. And uh, I like having like nice chunks of this stuff. So, you know, you can do a small dice, you can do uh, batons, you can do all these different styles, um, but it's honestly whatever, whatever you like. And that's kind of the um, thought process with the entire cooking is, you know, I, I think I'll give a little bit of like a best, you know, way to do it. But at the end of the day, it's it's really up to you. You know, it's it's letting people cook and do things on their own is is the most important thing. So. And Darren, you told me too that the cookbook is a little flexible too, right? Like if you don't have a certain ingredient, it's easily substituted with something else. And like you said, like the like what you recommend is what you recommend, but there's different avenues to go about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like it's a uh, it's a cookbook that we we made that we want to make sure people are, you know, learning and having fun and, and feeding the people that they care most about. So, you know, at the end of the day, if, um, if everything, if you're substituting something uh, for another thing, you know, like Miller High Life for Coors Light or something like that, it, it's all, it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? And everyone, the cookbook is $10 and you get over 40 recipes. I mean, it's a great deal. Mark has been telling us that it's amazing. I'm about to purchase mine. And then for $3 more, you can help support the furloughed restaurant workers from Boca. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's the restaurant industry is a big family. So the more that we can try and support all these people that are furloughed is, you know, really important to me. Darren, can you also, while you're cutting and chopping, tell us a little bit about your trajectory in restaurants? Cause I think it's an interesting story. Uh, yeah. So basically I started, I'm from the western suburbs, a uh, small town called Geneva. Uh, so basically, I, I started cooking in high school. Um, and from there, I was in, you know, home ec and doing all that stuff. And, uh, and I started cooking really early out of the gate. Um, cooking in Chicago uh, was like my biggest dream as a kid. So um, I just eventually... You know, took the Metro in almost every day to, to massage and work in different, different restaurants. Um, and then from so there, sorry? That looks so good already. I love that blue bowl. Yeah, so this is basically the onions and the radishes all mixed in there. Um, I have this, uh, these are catch green chili. So they basically are um, like roasted chilies that are, are really good with a lot of flavor just in the can so it fits with the theme. Um, they're drained, you know, add that in there like this so. Um, and then next we can add in our avocados. Um, but yeah, so, you know, starting cooking at a young age and uh, just kind of kept going at it. I don't really have any other options. That's why this corn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think. You're committed. You're committed now at this point. Yeah, right? There's, there's really no backing out. So um, next we're going to add in the avocados about two avocados. I, I really love avocado, so I'm going to add a two of them. Basically, your knife, remove the pit. I have a little bowl right here. 
as well. I think a lot of people when they're cooking at home, um, they make a lot of trips back and forth to the garbage. Um, so I, a little trick is to kind of have a little garbage can on your station. And it keeps oh, your, your that's station. next level. That's, perfect. That trick. that's so clever. It is next level. I never even thought of that. Um, I'm like, I'm just going to kind of dice these avocados inside the actual, um, Oh no, I just failed. So you do it inside the skin? Cool. Yeah, so I've always just done them inside the skin. So basically you're being careful enough to just do the tip of the knife and go down. I'm just doing them in cross sections, like little squares. So it's easier for me because all I need to do now is just take a spoon and then you just peel it out. So, yeah. so making smart. Of, uh, making a lot of block as a prep cook back in the day. That's like a variation uh, on the mango trip too, right? People, some people perfect. cube mango in the thing. Yeah, yeah, you can actually cube mango in it. And then since mango skin is a little bit more, uh, it's a little harder to get the mango free, you can actually use the rim of a glass and use that mango on the edge of the glass and it falls right in there. So. What? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So I'm adding in all this stuff. And also I have a little towel right here, another little hack or a little way to keep your kitchen cleaner. Mm -hmm. A little towel right there to kind of keep it, uh, your cutting board clean and free. Like that. Clever, so clever. So, I'm taking notes right now. <laughs> basically I have the avocado, I have all that stuff in there, um, shrimp. So I have the juice of about two lemons and two limes. I'm gonna add that in as well. So Darren, when you were choosing all the dishes to recipe for this cookbook that we're all going to buy, um, how did you choose? Like, what were the factors that made it a good recipe for the book? Um, you know, basically, if it was easy, uh, I wanted to kind of highlight it, but also if it was delicious. So my main thing was, like, I wanted to make sure that the food we were making was, you could, you could get it easily either from a local store or you could get it from your pantry. Um, so that, that was kind of the thought process because during a, uh, a legitimate pandemic, you don't really want people going out to different grocery stores or three different grocery stores. You want them to kind of, uh, stay in the area as much as they can. So they feel safe and then, you know, cooking with what you have at home. So that's basically the thought process. Very cool. I hope. <laughs> so next avocado, cilantro, uh, or avocados in there. I'm going to add in, um, our cumin. So I've never, is like, tell me about cumin. I don't know how this spice works. It's not like one that I use very often. Oh, I love cumin beans. Yeah? You gotta go on it, yeah. Learn about it. Yes, I think it's, I think it's a staple Preach, in a lot of ethnic uh, and uh, Latin, Latin American cooking. It just sounds like a really nice floral, but like almost a peppery note as well. Yeah. Add in the soy, which is not necessarily a traditional uh, ingredient in ceviche. But uh, I think it adds nice salinity and uh, a little bit more umami. So. Listen, I'm all about the soy, though. I don't know about the cumin, but I definitely know about the soy. <laughs> so here, next, we're going to add about, about a pinch of salt. Don't be shy. You can always re-season. Um, and then this is Cajun. So this is, um, this is also a cool seasoning that I like. Um, it's basically dehydrated lime and dried pepper and a little bit of salt and garlic. And it's great on the edges of like micheladas or margaritas. It's or eating it with uh, melon. So if you have like summer melon, uh, whether it's uh, like honeydew or watermelon, this and salt and like a little bit of lime juice is like next level. I know that I asked you to use a canned item or two in this recipe, so you probably adjusted a little bit. But you could use fresh jalapeno too, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, fresh jalapeno, pickled jalapeno, all that stuff as well. Um, so then next, I have a uh, tagine. I'm going to add that in, about a teaspoon of that as well. This looks so good. I can't wait. And uh, I like, you know, the tequila I'm using is just like a normal, uh, basically, reposado tequila. Um, nothing crazy. Um, but I like the way it uh, adds a little bit of, uh, I guess, I guess, Floral, but also a little bit of like a, a bite to the uh, actual ceviche itself. So I'm going to add in about an ounce and a half of that. And then I'm going to basically, 
here. I have uh, some fresh cilantro right here, about a quarter bunch. Just gonna rip that off. My actual, uh, I tried to go with the trend as well, it's probably, <laughs> but I made, a, I made a little vase out of a can of beer, Twisted Hippo, so. Oh, yeah. Herb decor is like my favorite thing. I mean, who can afford flowers and things like that, especially now? Yeah. Like, I love herbs in water as a, a display. Yeah. So fun. So I'm going to slice up this cilantro as well. Um, add in the stems too. I think stems of cilantro are like super nice. They have a nice bite if you love cilantro, which I do. Some people don't. So I like adding all that in there. Rough chopping it up. Do you make this? How long does it last? Like, could you kind of, you know, meal prep it and have it for a couple days, or is this one that you should eat pretty quickly? Um, so you can pretty much. I mean, avocado kind of gets all oxidized, uh, right. but the shrimp, as soon as it is introduced to the lemon and lime. It's gonna continue. So um, I would say maybe you could prep everything out and then add in the lime juice or lemon juice as soon as you're ready to eat it. Um, but if it goes for longer than a day, it kind of gets a little uh, tough. Gotcha. Well, it looks so delicious. I'm sure I'm gonna finish it all. <laughs> so it's basically all mixed together like this. Um, get everything mixed in. I like adding a little bit of olive oil for fat, adding that in there as well. A little bit of shine and uh, that should be about it. We'll uh, put it on a plate what I have right here. So simple, so quick too. Yeah, it, uh, it's, to be honest it's it's uh, simple and we made it the other day and we're like oh this would be great. So it's hot outside. This is something that would be great to you know have a, a table when you're you know when, once we can uh, we don't have to social distance. Uh, this would be great for having a group of people over and and uh, having this in the middle of the street. I'm not plating. I'm just eating it from my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I love the soy. That's so different. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just good for you know saltiness and a little bit of note. So that's that. Uh, the tortilla chips and the Salt can't really go See, there, there's Dustin holding some. That looks delicious. <laughs> nice job, Dustin. Nice knife work, too. Team uh, Tribeca, or Financial District, rather. Aho, as usual. Oh, so good. Amazing job. I love his cocktail glass. Oh, that's a cool cocktail glass. Thank you. Right on. <laughs> Yay, Jessica. That I'm looks so good. It. I don't know, Darren. This is an audience with some like real legit knife skills. I'm pretty yeah, good. Got some real uniform cuts. It's good. <laughs> you can find a bunch of similar recipes just like this, quick and easy, in Darren's cookbook. We're gonna drop the link again in the chat in just a little bit. Um, make sure to buy that because I mean, you can just tell this stuff is easy to make and it's delicious as well, from what everyone's telling us. Well done, Darren. Thank you so much for sharing the recipe and your book and a little bit of your story. You're always welcome here at brunch. We love you. Shout Thanks. out Dustin as well on the graphics. Great job, Dustin. <laughs> yes, amazing job. All right, so we've had a little something to drink, some more than others. That's me. Huh, I'm on my second one as well, B. <laughs> Cheers. I was just telling Yuli how delicious it is. <laughs> we also now have a little bit of savory sustenance, which I'm super excited about. This ceviche, I've had a couple bites of it. It's so delicious and exactly what I want in this warm weather. So great choice, Darren. And now I'd like to introduce Mason Marks, who is someone I worked with for two years plus over down the street at Maple and Ash Steakhouse. And that recommends him, I think, because a lot of people love that restaurant. And the thing that I think is really most spectacular about Mason is he has a really particular 
understanding and joy in delivering hospitality, which is, I think, what a lot of us are always trying to do in our businesses and also in our lives to make people feel comfortable and special and important and happy and joyous. And I know that Mason is one of the most amazing practitioners of that hospitality. And I asked him what he wanted to share today, and he said he wanted to set things on fire with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we've also, he and I have spoken about one of his inspirations, and that's um, Commander's Palace. The Brennan family in New Orleans are some of the greatest hospitalitarians or whatever sort of terminology you'd like to use. And I know that he went there more than once probably, but while we were working together, he did do a visit. Right, <laughs> so there's the book. Anyway, Mason, I'd love for you to share your magic, your thoughts about hospitality, and also this incredible foster recipe because I am ready to burn my eyebrows off. Let's do it. All right, everybody. Hi. Hi. Good to have everybody here in my home. So a little bit about what we're going to do. I've done a little pre-prepping, but I'm going to give you a moment or two to set everything up yourselves. So we're going to start off, well, with a glass of wine or a cocktail or anything you got in there you go. Uh, that's important. We're going to do two tablespoons of butter. So one of the most wonderful things in life is the fact that they actually mark the measurements on the stick of butter. Uh, it's a fantastic thing. It's one of the things you take for granted. I love it. So anyway, two tablespoons of butter. I've got a little cinnamon stick here. You can have just a pinch of cinnamon nearby too. Mace, before you launch into the cooking part, can you sort of um, elaborate a little bit about why you chose this recipe and you know, why oh, you- absolutely. Well, I, I, I was planning on doing that while everybody prepped up. But, okay, cool. So one of my heroes, and we were talking about this before, is Ella Brennan. And if you haven't, if you, if you love hospitality industry, anything, uh, and you love the, the, the hospitality end of things, Ella Brennan is uh, my big hero. If you haven't read this book, uh, Miss Ella, Commander's Palace, uh, it's, uh, I don't want a restaurant where a jazz band can't come marching through. She changed so many things for all of us. Uh, and it just, I, I can't recommend the book enough. Uh, I, I think not enough people have read it. It makes a big difference. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in a minute too. Uh, but while you're getting everything together, you're going to get these two tablespoons of butter, a little cinnamon. You're going to do a half a cup of brown sugar. Get yourself set up. And then slice one banana. You're gonna have an ounce of dark rum. Set that aside. Now with your brown sugar, you ever notice you get brown sugar, you need it for one thing, you don't need it for another month and then it turns into a brick? Yeah. yeah. Can your brown sugar. Get it airtight, you're covered. Okay. Can now, it? Scoop up, scoop up a vanilla ice cream. If you're, uh, if you're feeling okay today, one scoop will do it. Uh, if you need the love, go for two. And then you want to heat up your pan while you're doing all this. The prep shouldn't take you more than a minute. But you want to get your pan, your pan heated up a little bit. So I have been living in, uh, I've been living in city apartments in Chicago forever. And so electric stoves. So if you want to use an electric stove, you're going to want to like a barbecue lighter or a lighter or a long match or something along that lines down the road. But in the meantime, while you're cutting off your cutting up your butter, your brown sugar, and your bananas, and all these things, you're going to want to get your pan heated to about medium heat. So, uh, going back to Ella Brennan, uh, this is her recipe. She had two hours to put this together. Uh, it was a uh, they were honoring the new uh, chief of police, the new police commander in New Orleans, and they were having a party that night and like. Like we were talking about earlier before the show started, a lot of these things are, you know, what you have to do is fly by night. You got to go real quick. So she had two hours to come up with a dessert, and this is what she came up with: uh, bananas foster, uh, named it after the police chief, in fact. And what I love about this recipe, or one of the things I love about it, is there's so many different variations on it. The core really is the butter, the brown sugar, and then a booze of some sort. So uh, let's say a little bit further on in summertime. You want to hit some cherries, hit some cherries and do brandy instead of the dark rum. Fantastic. Yes. Later on in summer, you want to slice up fresh peaches and do a bourbon. Beautiful. 
Uh, oh, no. Same bass, same thing. And you can play with them. You can do this is just really sort of just uh, the core of what you need to do. Uh, and, and then you can just be as creative as you want. And it's fun. Wait, now, please, before you launch into it, can you also just tell people? So for those who haven't been at Maple Nash before, Mason's a maitre d' there. And all the maitre d's there are like super trained in flambéing, if you will. <laughs> And when you are like a regular and they really love you, they'll certainly come. I mean, you push this up on a cart, table side, right, Mason? And then this uh, well, actually, we, we actually have a, uh, a stand that we will take and put on your table. And uh, this is a sort of a secret menu thing. It's not in print anywhere. And uh, we, we run out of them quickly. We do a variation on it. It's a little bit more ornate. There's uh, uh, Aya uh, Fukai, who owns Aya's, uh, pastries and Iris Bakery. She does a, uh, a chocolate bomb for us that we fill with vanilla ice cream and then we ladle this on top of. So just like everything else, you know, one of the things you can be flexible with is what exactly you pour your flambe over. So uh, and that's one of the fun things we do is having that, uh, uh, that chocolate bomb with the vanilla ice cream and everything else that we, it just sort of melts the chocolate. And that's a fun thing. Secret menu thing. Uh, and, and, and a fun thing about, you know, being a maitre d' there is that for about a year, uh, there were only two of us that were really allowed to do them. So I, I probably did, I don't know, somewhere in the area of like 5,000 of these things uh, over the course of two hey, years. Jason, when you do this in your apartment, because I remember watching it in the dining room at Maple Nash and like the flames were literally sometimes eight feet high, right? Yeah. So, uh, and yes, and we don't want to do that today. Okay. Unless you've got 16 foot high ceilings. We do not want to. We do not want to light your place on fire. So uh, you're going to want to be cautious of that. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, once everybody's prepped up, uh, you're, this is going to go quick. So if, if everybody can raise a hand and let me know when you're getting close, uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll move on once everybody feels like they've got everything they need and their mise en place in place. Looking around, I'm looking like everybody's sort of got everything ready to go. I see people at their stovetops. I like I, Mason's style, very interactive. You know, <laughs> everybody, everybody's, everybody's, got, everybody's got their thing going? Hell yeah. Mason Mark, right. let's flame it up. All right, so hey, I gotta make a shout out to another very important woman, my daughter, Chance Valentine Marks, graduated from high school today. Congratulations. Uh, 2020. Love her, very proud of her. All right. So, start off with our butter and cinnamon. Now, you're gonna put that cinnamon in the pan, but you want your cinnamon to be in that butter. Now, you're gonna melt the butter mostly, so it's almost all the way down. How high is the pan? Like, if I'm an electric and it goes up to 10, how high should it be? No, you go, go up to five. Just okay. as long as you've preheated your pan, okay. you wanna get that butter as melted as you possibly can. So it's pretty much just all gone. Everybody with me? With you. All right, yeah. brown sugar. Now, we're gonna put this back on the flame and you're gonna take your wooden spoon or your uh, silicone spoon, it doesn't really matter. The key is, is that we don't want, we wanna make sure that we've got a little bit of a sauce. So you're gonna break this brown sugar down this is definitely a constant vigilance thing. You can't walk away. No, you can't walk away. This is going to happen quick. So, once your brown sugar becomes liquefied, you're going to take your bananas. Bananas. You're going to take your bananas, you're going to put them in the pan. Take them off the fire. You don't need to do them a whole lot. Just get your bananas coated. And then you're going to take your pan off of the flame, right? Okay. Take the pan off the flame. You're going to take your rum and pour it into your pan. How much rum are we pouring in? I forgot. Hold on, I can't hear you. How much rum are we pouring in, Mason? 
Uh, one ounce. One ounce. One ounce. Okay. Just a little. Now, once you've got your your one ounce of rum in there, if you're on gas, you're going to take your pan, you're going to put it on the stove, and you're going to tip it up. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, did everybody get fired? Because mine got messed up. <laughs> Not yet. I'm doing it. Well, That's all right. It's still delicious. Different. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the uh, cinnamon stick. Oh, look at Tahoe. Nice. Tahoe got it. Mason, look. You got it. Whoa. Jessica's got it too. Oh, yeah. Badass. We're flaming. Go. Oh. So cool. You're going to take... <laughs> Your bananas and your uh, sort of slurry of brown sugar and there you go, baby. Butter and you're gonna pour that in over your ice cream, which you've already got prepped. Wait, so do you just let it keep flaming until it burns out? Yes. Okay. You can turn off your flame though. You don't really need to get it hotter once it's lit on fire. And here you go. You've got bananas foster. Wow. Mason, that was so cool. It was so cool to see people actually like succeeding and having everyone's hands on fire. That was awesome. Well, it's, it's fun. It's a great thing. Once you know the base, you can play with it. You can do anything you want, you know, peaches and whatever's in season. So you said peaches and bourbon. Bananas and rum. What was the third one you said? Strawberries. Well, you know, I, I, I like uh, I like cherries. If you can pick some cherries when they're in season, just get a little bowl of them and uh, some brandy. One ounce of brandy, half a cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of butter. You're good as gold. Oh my gosh, that's like boozy licious. I don't think I added the amount that you said. I think I added three times the amount that you said. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do that's, that. Too. That's, that's my that kind of banana flexible. sponsor. No, really? <laughs> wow, that's oh, cool. that was great. First time I, making it. Wow. It's so fun. He's on the West Coast, and so he's having this for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> nice. Good job, Jess. That was amazing. Okay, Mason, so are there any, like, um, you know, I think, I feel like I just did the 100 level of that. So 200 to 300 level. Are there any other kind of pro tips for, you know, I don't know, getting the bananas more caramelized, or are there any other tricks you've learned in doing this hundreds and thousands of times? One of the secrets is, is that you really want that butter to just get to the point where it's melted. So you're gonna get your brown sugar in there until it's, uh, it's, it's liquefied. You can play with the amounts depending on, uh, you know, how saucy you want it to be. And uh, you can go from there. Some. Uh, some recipes like to add a little banana liqueur. I like to keep it simple. Uh, another thing you could do is a little uh, a little powdered cinnamon. When the flame is going, you can kind of just flick that into the flame and it uh, sets off sparks. That's fun for a lot of people. Oh, can we do that now? No, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> 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 it all apart. It's great. Can't yeah. wait to try this. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Mason. And thanks for awesome, your, your gift for hospitality in yet another way. I know a lot of people get to enjoy your hospitality at the restaurant and those people in your life. So you can follow Mason here. That's the second floor bar at Maple and Ash, which is right at, oh my God, I don't even remember the address anymore. That's how long it's been. Eight West, Eight West Maple. <laughs> And they are open. They're open for outdoor patio seating right now if you're in Chicago and you can score a reservation. I may or may not just give you Mason's cell phone. No, don't worry, Mason. I won't. <laughs> you can. A lot of people have it. <laughs> Mason, you're a badass, dude. Thank you. Yeah, thank Love you. Love you guys. So much. So, Matt, what else do we have to do today? I think that's it for our guests. What a great show. Everything went by very smoothly. I think we've kind of got this down to a science at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we are, uh, there were a few weeks where we were going an hour and a half, two hours. Sometimes. An hour, we've got it down to an hour. 
Um, so just, yeah, let, let's throw up that guest graphic again for today's guest. Thank you to everyone who came by, Yuli, for filling in last minute and for yeah. doing two really great cocktails that I think were pretty easy for everyone to follow along with. So thanks to all three of our amazing and yeah. talented. Yuli, Darren, Mason, well, get Darren's you. cookbook, visit Mason at Maple and Ash. Um, just three really great guests. So let's let's talk about next week a little bit.